go. Coach, uh, thank you for making the trip out here. This is, I think, like, is this like your first public appearance as the UK uh, assistant coach now? Is, uh, is this public? This, this is public. This is going on over the radio and all these folks. Well, you one time told me I had a face for radio. So this is... <laughs> he thinks he's a joker, this guy. He said, we've got to get you on the radio show. I said, why? He goes, well, you got a face for radio. I did not say that. You, I think, said that back to me. Uh, coach, you've got to, you, here at Kentucky, you told me that this was a job that you sort of thought about. Like, I, I never thought I would get something like that. When you came here, how great has it been to be in Lexington and to have this job? Well, there's a combination of things when you say something like that. Uh, a real long time ago, when I realized that I wanted to be a basketball coach, uh, I said, if you're going to be a coach and you want to learn from somebody, try to learn from the best. And uh, I had asked Joe Hall, Coach Hall, I said, would you mind me, uh, you know, in some way, you know, just picking your brain and, you know, speaking with you and he was kind enough to uh write write me a letter and invite me down how old were you at that it's a great story you were in college is yeah, that the time that was and college. you wrote joby hall and said i'd like to learn from you and he invited you here right? yeah and he's a guy that's at the top of the profession and uh was so kind and that was my first experience coming down here uh so when there was greatness then with that coach and then to have the opportunity to be here now with greatness with this coach uh, it really is a dream come true. And then you throw on the passion and uh, just how much everybody in this community and state, uh, you know, love Kentucky basketball. It really is a, a pleasure and honor to be here. And thank you very much. You know, uh, your relationship with Calipari, you guys go back to when you were, what, uh, counselors at, at the Garfinkel camp? Is that right? Is that is that how long you guys go back? Well, Back then, I had a lot more hair and a lot less weight. So we, we, we go back to uh, the five-star basketball camp where, you know, so many basketball coaches, uh, you know, have, have cut their teeth and, and worked. Uh, and my first week ever working there, uh, walk in to a dorm room, and uh, the other guy that comes walking in, is Cal. Is, is Cal. So that is a great, I think that is a great story. You guys end up random. You weren't from the same place, right? You randomly get paired together in a dorm, and now however many years later, you're working with each other at the best college basketball program in the country. That is like, that's that's like a movie story or something like that. It is great. And then something that I just heard, you know, recently, and he even told me back then, he was from Pittsburgh and I was from New York. He told me I had an accent. Which I didn't know I had. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, your accent is maybe my favorite part of you. And I'm working on my impression. I just so you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going for it. Now, now that you've been well, here. You've got, you've got some company because we've had a basketball camp uh, going on a couple of weeks in the summer. And without realizing it, uh, after a couple of days and then a couple of weeks, a few of the uh, council of coaches wind up having a contest oh, you... <laughs> on, on, on who could uh, you know, oh, do, do the best imitation. And uh, the guy, I said, you know, is this really true? Is this going on at night? And he goes, yeah, coach, what is? I said, well, would you mind doing it? And, and were was, they good? He was actually pretty good. I, right? I, I get the guy that. who was the one who was pretty good. All right, so now you're sort of known as this this master recruiter. John Rothstein, our mutual friend, said, wait till you see this guy sort of in action. Do you, do you love recruiting? I mean, to be a good recruiter, do you have to really enjoy it? Well, I think it's important for anyone to love what they do. Yes. You know, no matter what type of uh, field or, or work you win, it, it really... When you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And I've uh, been fortunate enough to be a basketball coach for a real long time now. And to come here just adds to the excitement and the love of that because you feed off people like yourself. And it's very uh, easy to go out and explain and sell the good parts of Kentucky uh, because there are so many of them, you know, basketball-wise in the city and in the state. And thank you very much. So do you, do you would talk to me about selling Kentucky. I mean, as a recruiter, I, it may sound simplistic. Well, you got nine national cha or eight national championships. you got the draft picks, Cal Perry, et cetera, the program, the fans. Nine, nine on the way. Keep going. Nine on the way. Nine on the way. Yeah, by the way, I, this is why one of the reasons I like this guy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Tell them your line. You said a line to me that I've held off on because I wanted you to say it. Tell them your Betsy Ross line you gave to me when, when, when the first time I met you. I know you. You don't remember that? I try to forget. But go ahead. <laughs> he said to me, he goes, you can call me the Betsy Ross of Kentucky because I'm going to help sew banner number nine, which I thought was an absolutely great, uh, absolutely great quote. But that was actually a big part of this. You really want to see, I, I think you said to me that you wanted to see help Kentucky win the ninth title and you and help your friend John Calipari get to the Hall of Fame, because most people think if you win two, you'll be in. Is that, that is a big part of it for you, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. No question. You get a little emotional about it. Yeah. This is, look, at this is great. I mean, this is great. Thinking about where I started coaching at St. Francis College, we didn't get this many people for a game. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is a radio show. This is a radio show, and it's yours. I, I can't believe you get this many people out here. I, mean, I, I, I was slicing. stunned when I pulled up in the parking lot, and it was, I was stunned. Well, listen, it's awesome. Glad to have you. We'll take a break. Come back. We'll do more Slice Royce here live at All Sports in Lexington. We'll be right back. Leland here for Allen Electric. Have I told you what an awesome experience we had when we asked the guys from Allen Electric out to the house to replace old light fixtures and spruce up some of the ceiling fans and things like that? They also found some problems in our older house and got it all fixed. These guys are licensed and state certified, which is very important. Allen Electric. Work with them a little bit. Uh, you all started practice to get ready for the Bahamas. First of all, how important is this Bahamas trip? Is it? I mean, you get get an early start basically because of it, right? Well, it really helps trying to identify certain things with your team. No coach Cal is looking forward to it, and hopefully more than anything, our players are looking forward to it because it's nice to have the opportunity to take a, take a trip like this. Uh, you know, throughout the years in coaching, uh, you, know, you find that more or less there are three different teams. Teams that play against each other, teams that play with each other, and teams that play for each other. And quite simply, teams that play against each other don't have too much success. Teams that play with each other do well. And one of the things you're seeing right now with this group is they actually play for each other. They like each other a lot. You can tell by the commitment of so many of the guys coming back, you know, that they want to be here. They want to do something special. And, uh, you know, even in our workouts that we've had throughout the summer and then just a couple of practices since we've been back uh, in town off the road recruiting, uh, these guys have really been more or less a band of brothers, and uh, it really is wonderful to see. see that is exciting to hear. 502 We're going to take a couple questions for Slice on the phone, so if you got a question, let us know. Tell me about the, the you know, some of these returning guys, we've probably seen play sometimes more than you, but the new guys, you've seen much more than us. I know Lyles is out right now, but Euless, Booker, and Towns, what can fans sort of expect from those guys? Well, three quality players, as their uh, press clippings would say, but when you get to know them, they've really been three quality people. Uh, they've been a pleasure to coach up until this point, uh, have really uh, been good team guys uh, as they've you know joined and added on here. And, you know, they're at some critical positions there. You know, one of them's a point guard, which is almost, uh, you know, like a king on a chessboard. You know, he's the guy that gets things going and... Uh, it's good competition with he against, you know, Andrew each day. And then, uh, you know, Carl Towns, who's uh, a center and has some size and provides some length. He's a very skilled young man and, uh, you know, real hard work. I probably have 10 messages on my phone right now from him in the past couple of days. You know, can we come in, get some extra work in, some shooting? So he's really anxious uh, to do well, another hard worker. And, uh, you know, Devin Booker, I've heard great things about him uh, on the recruiting trails from other coaches that were actually recruiting him yeah. and saying how fortunate, you know, we are to have him. And, uh, you know, Trey, Trey Lyles, uh, everyone's anxious for him to get back. How home. important is it? I mean, you know, Tino Gaudio was on here yesterday and said, look, I've never seen a team with this you much. Get, you get a lot of guests. Well, people <laughs> must like you. <laughs> I, I like your mom. She's nice. Your she is. My, my, she my, is very mom's nice. really nice. Yes, she is. Very nice. Uh, he said he can't remember a team with this much depth. I mean, how important is it in practice to be able to have guys? You mentioned Euless against Andrew. I'm sure Booker's going against Aaron and all this stuff. How important that is in practice to have those kind of battles going on? Well, competition builds success. And uh, one of the things the guys uh, are looking at right now, uh, there really isn't any days off you can take from practice. They're going to be tested. They're going to be challenged. But as maybe the saying says, iron sharpens iron. Uh, you know, these guys will rise with that, and our team will be better because of it. Uh, 
uh, are you ready to go to the Bahamas? Here, have you ever been before? Actually, have been there before. Uh, it was kind of on a vacation and was supposed to be for three days and turned out to be in three weeks. So, yeah, I like, <laughs> yeah, I like it very much. See, I like this about you. I can already tell you, 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 you're the guy who will sort of go with the flow there. You're going to go three days, I'll go three weeks. All right, we're going to take my, my, my fiance liked it, so she wanted to stay, so I said, okay, let's stay. All right, we're going to take over the phones now. Are you ready to talk to some UK fans? You, this is a new experience for you. If they can understand me, maybe they'll have some good, <laughs> if they have some good pizza recommendations, I'm still looking for, still looking find, for good pizza. Find some, find I know I'm going to get people right until and Slice to come, tell Slice he needs to come here. Uh, who's up first, Chef? We'll get Hamby. Hamby. How are you, Hamby? Oh, well, Mario said so I was going to go next segment, but uh, I'm in DC. Hamby and Slice on the same line. How about oh, well, wait a minute. Do you have a basketball question, Hamby, or no? The one that can wait till next segment. All right, well, why don't you wait till next segment? Nice All right. to you, Hamby. <laughs> Appreciate it. That was a good start. <laughs> What's the next one? Like, start? Slice, welcome to Kentucky. Have a nice life. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Jackie. Jen? Go ahead, Jackie. Jackie, how are you, Jackie? I'm great, Matt. Hey, Slice. Jackie, um, do you really have a question? Or are you going to hang up, too? <laughs> no, I really have Most a of my life until I got engaged, women did hang up on me, so I'm used to it. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, first off, my birthday's next Sunday, and a Bahamas trip would be an amazing birthday present. But my question is, this UK staff is big and well-known and has a lot of hype surrounding it. What was the hardest part of coming on to the coaching staff? Yeah, what's it like to be an outside, you know, it's coming in for the outside into something like that? Staff that's been together for a little while. Well, you know, I may be new to this staff, but I'm not new to coaching. So, uh, you know, having been in this for a long time and working for some very good coaches, uh, you know, in the past and having worked for coaches who were national coaches of the year and both, you know, Ben Howland and Jamie mm -hmm. Dixon, uh, the first guy to ever give me a job, Von Ganulin, he was a former assistant at UNLV when they won a nap national championship uh, working at UNLV. Bill Baino is now with the Toronto Raptors. So I've always been a part of a good staff, uh, you know, with good leadership and uh, Coach Robick uh, was another five-star guy from Pittsburgh, so we know each other since our council of days, you know, at that camp and uh, have met Kenny Payne in the past, and he's just a super guy, a terrific guy. How long were you at Pitt? Uh, originally for, uh, let me see, the first time was four years with Coach Howland and then was going to go to UCLA with, with Coach and then wound up uh, convinced to stay at Pitt. And yeah. stayed three more years with Jamie Dixon when he was the head coach there. So that was seven. Uh, went on to become a head coach uh, at Manhattan College and uh, wound up uh, going back to Pitt last year. So it was a total of eight years. With so is that coaches. does that become is that hard to leave a place you know that well to come here, or is it like, well, this is Kentucky, you got to do this? Uh, yeah, that's more. You answered the question. <laughs> Pretty good. This is Kentucky, you got to do this. Who's next, Shed? Big brother. Big brother. How are you? Doing good, sir. Uh, i got a question for Coach. Uh, I know you haven't been in UK very long, but, you know, when you're out on the recruiting trail and you're recruiting these high-level athletes, I mean, they know Kentucky's track record under Cal. I mean, what's the biggest, uh, if there's a, I don't want to say a negative, but what's the biggest concern of the recruits? You know, is it who's going pro? Is it? Your roster is too loaded. I mean, what is the biggest well, big concern? Brother, number one, congratulations on your TV show. You're getting, you're getting, from what we're told, you're getting great ratings. I'm not sure what season you're into right now, but I'd like to be your agent. All right. And, and you just, you know, you guys are great. You ask a question. Like you and Matt ask questions. You answer it yourself. You know, that, that, that is a big one. Uh, you know, who, who's... Who's going to stay? Who's going to go? Uh, Coach Cal has really kind of changed the college basketball model, you know, on what, what, what's gone on. Uh, you know, and, and again, when you look at it, just take the NBA draft, for example. You know, the NBA draft at one point was basically a resume. It was what you had done, you know, for four years in college. And then as that started to change, and it was more or less not what you've done the past four years, but what you're going to do in the next four years in your pro career. And, uh, you know, Coach Cal identified and saw that uh, before anyone. And uh, he's, you know, getting players in here that are 
of the quality that could come in and then uh, be here and Again, now is so do you try to convince guys to wait until they see who goes to the draft? Do you try to convince no, no, them it doesn't? On. Big brother, you still on the line? No, he's gone. He's, yeah, gone. he's gone. Okay, so Matt, Matt, your question now. Go ahead. <laughs> but, I mean, do you try to Big get it? Big brother one ear, Matt, the other. No, I'm sorry. You, do you try to get it to where, I mean, how do you convince guys who are worried about that at all? Do you just, or do you just say, listen, you shouldn't worry about that? You know what? Really, a lot of people shouldn't worry. I mean, 90% of the things people worry about don't even happen. I mean, just think about your own life. So, but I feel wanna... like you're almost like a life mentor here. I mean, you, you, you give these all these slogans. It's like you, I think there's a self-help book in your future if, if, you, if you want. Well, if we don't get number nine, then maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? One more, Shannon. Wallace. Wallace. How are you, Wallace? Thank you. Welcome, Coach. And I didn't know you were going to be on here and you probably can't comment on this but it's for matt uh the good and kid out of taylor county yeah we can't we can't talk about you that i'm sorry wallace let's go to somebody else uh shannon all right uh landy landy how are you landy i'm good uh welcome uh coach and thank you for having me on here you guys are okay well i couldn't ever spell anyway so it's just cross and cross and just uh, I was just wondering, do you see us pressing a lot this year? Pressing? Yes. You know, that's You know what? That's probably more of a question for Coach Cal to answer. Uh, he's going to use this Bahama trip right now to figure out, uh, you know, which are some of the better ways to play. We'll probably experiment, uh, you know, with some different types of defenses, man, zone, press. Uh, you know, for him to get comfortable and see what works best with this group and the personnel, what they're suited for. All right. Well, thank you, Landy. Well, listen, Coach. I almost knocked my head off there. <laughs> you like that? That was Looks like he's in Vegas. <laughs> listen, thank you very much. First of all, how about that for a great first appearance in front of people? Coach, in all seriousness, congratulations on the gig. Great having you here. Hope to have you on again soon. Thank Thanks you very much. Nice to see you. Great to see these people. Nice to meet you, Mom. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Live on the Blue Lights Across the Bluegrass Tour, this is Kentucky Sports Radio.